Hello, everyone. Morning. If you can hear us, just put something in the chat that says you're here, you're caffeinated, ready to go, you're wide awake. All right. Awesome. I saw we have a few. We have a a, a Nathan in the in the watching as well as a Braden. So we're both kind of covered here. <laughs> I feel like we should just go and they can present for us. <laughs> Switch uh, screens. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know what they were in for by having the same light names as us. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We'll give it a minute just so everyone else can come in. Randy on a second coffee of the day, I feel that. <laughs> Adawala. Victoria, awesome. All over the map. That's one thing I love about um, the national platform is you get people from all over. It's great. I don't know where Nat went. <laughs> Morning, Deborah. <clears throat> Took off there for a second. All good. All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well this morning um, and ready to learn a little bit about nutrition. Uh, my name is Brayden Lasecki. I'm a health promotion specialist at CFB Borden, uh, so in Ontario. Um, alongside with me is Nat or Nathaniel Smith, um, also from CFB Borden, Health Promotion Specialist as well. Um, so this week is the final week of Mission Nutrition. So we've done over the past six weeks, uh, six different series uh, surrounding nutrition and what, um, you know, nutrients is, how to get the best out of a balanced plate, um, how to avoid those fad diets and eat more accurately to what our body's needs are. Um, we did stuff on menu planning, grocery store planning. Um, and then today we're kind of switching it up again as well to try and bring you some new content. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, eating under the influence. And by that we mean eating under a stressful situation. So eating under influence how stress impacts our eating routine or what we're putting into our body. So today, well, I'll start by this. Um, so today we'll start by just addressing some principles of uh, today's session. So today's session will be um, available to you after the session is complete on Calf Connection. Um, so with that being said, anything that you see today is part of national defense. Um, and, and can't be reproduced in any way. So we are giving it to you available afterwards, um, but that's available to you. Um, that's the only way it's available to you. Um, as well, we are um, going to be talking about stress. We're going to be talking about nutrition in the scope of adults. So um, please be mindful that this isn't for young children or young adults. Um, it's more aimed at uh, an adult uh, demographic. So please have viewer discretion, you know, put those headphones in if you want, or just be mindful of the content that you're hearing today um, with little kids around. Um, as well, we are being recorded right now, um, hence we're putting it on Cat Connection afterwards. Um, so please be mindful of that. Things that are said in the chat uh, will be available after. Um, so be mindful of that confidentiality, of course. Um, as well, if you want to ask a question, please, feel free to in the chat, or if you want, we can um, unmute you and put your microphone on and um, you can ask that way as well. So please feel free to do so. One of us throughout the presentation will be monitoring the chat at all times. I'm gonna throw out a poll right now. Uh, there we go. So what's your affiliation within the CAF? So, uh, we have really no way of monitoring who comes to our uh, discussions or our sessions. So this is one way we can monitor that. We've got a lot of serving members. Family member, that's great. Civilian, awesome. And 
and in past series, like we've done five series already, um, hopefully some of you have seen those series and have been part of those before and in the past. We won't be doing too much of a review this morning with you. Um, so hopefully some of those ground uh, principles and, and those concepts that we've talked about in the past are um, known. All right, so our outline for this morning. Um, we do have a fair bit to get through, um, but Nat and I were talking before, we might not even hit the hour mark. Uh, so we might get off a little bit earlier than expected, which is good, uh, get some time to go outside for us all. So this morning we're gonna be discussing eating cues. So what actually promotes um, or prompts us to eat. Uh, as well then we'll start to get into that stress under the influence, or eating under the influence, sorry. Um, so how stress and those triggers uh, maybe force us or promote us to eat a little bit more or eat differently and how that kind of plays a role within our eating habits. Uh, right now, especially being so different than what we have been in before. So most of us are, you know, uh, working from home. We have the kids around. Um, we're, we're definitely out of our routines. So how that stress plays a role in what we're eating and how much we're eating and what we're eating in general. Um, we'll talk about that as well. And then those triggers of, you know, what's prompting us to eat. And then road to success. So we're going to be talking about some tips for, you know, eating out. So I know a lot of people are reaching for takeout right now, um, which is fine, but there are ways to do that maybe more um, effectively that you can get those nutrients in as opposed to eating those other foods more often than not. Um, as well, we'll talk about the people in our lives that might either promote positive eating habits or um, sabotage them. So we'll talk about those individuals and how to have that conversation with them if you are trying to eat healthier. Um, maybe those people in your uh, home or you know friends and family that you might see in physical distancing, I'm not sure. Um, but how to have that conversation with them to get them on board of your positive changes in your eating habits. And then we'll just provide you with some general tips at the end of you know, some takeaways. What can you do after you leave this session to help guide those positive changes in your life? All right, so eating cues. So noticing when we're hungry is awesome. Um, but we have to be mindful of that. So oftentimes when we reach for food, we might not always be hungry. We might be reaching for food because of other reasons. So the biggest thing here is about mindful eating. And I'll, I'll touch on this a few times throughout the presentation. Um, but eating cues generally, there are two kind of eating cues. There's internal. So meaning those, those cues that come from within ourselves. And then there's external cues that come from triggers within our environment. Um, with that said, eating cues don't always have to have negative association with them. Most times they are probably more negative, pushing us to reach for those uh, unhealthy foods. But they can also, eating cues can also have a positive impact on our eating. So um, I'll, I'll touch on those in a minute. Um, but that can be a positive cue to, you know, change your eating habits and change and reach for something a little healthier. So external eating cues. So these are triggers that we find in our environment that can be divided into both physical and uh, social cues. So these cues are from uh, our environment. It's Externally, what are we seeing or what are we being kind of marketed to um, to reach for certain foods or certain times of the day or in certain situations? So when it comes to physical environment cues, uh, these can be, you know, you are driving by an advertisement and you see that Taco Bell is having a two for one taco sale or um, you're co-worker or your friend brings in uh, freshly baked cookies into the office and you smell them across the room and they're just wafting uh, in our office when we go back to work that is a common thing <laughs> um, and then maybe seeing you know advertisements um, on social media right now is huge i feel like i can't scroll more than five minutes without seeing an advertisement for a fast food restaurant a takeout um, chain or whatever it is 
Um, and then if we think about those takeout items, maybe they're giving us, you know, extra bread at the table or those extra things that we might not need that are just kind of those freebies that are tossed into the mix that we might not need, but they're there, so we'll probably eat them. Um, so those are physical environment cues. And then we also have something called social environment cues. So um, often these are triggered by interactions with other people. Um, so maybe our friends, family, a situation that we're encouraged to overeat or maybe eat more than we originally planned to. So if you think about, you know, maybe going for a drink with friends or going out to dinner with friends, um, and you always, I, I always have that friend who, you know, buys nachos as an appetizer for the table. Um, that's going to promote you to eat more, obviously. Um, or maybe you have a colleague that brings in, you know, a plate of cookies to celebrate a social interaction or uh, maybe a birthday or something like that, um, that you're kind of, by, based on the social environment, they're almost forcing you to eat a little bit. Um, I know this is more often than not in holiday or events or celebrations. You know, we all often hear that at Christmas we're eat, overeating, that kind of thing. Um, that, that kind of plays into that social environment. So if we're being social, we're more likely to eat more. Um, and oftentimes, and we'll talk about this later, is those people aren't doing it on purpose, um, but they might be those saboteurs that are kind of causing you to overeat or eat things that might not be the healthiest uh, just because of the, the social environment that you're in. All righty, so um, I would say the more common one would be internal eating cues. So um, internal eating cues come from within ourselves. Um, they can be psychological, they can be emotional, um, they can be related to HALT, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but phys psychological cues are kind of the ones we most often think of. So when we're hungry, our brain sends a message that says, you know, it's time to eat. Um, and then you reach for food. And that's the most, that's the ideal one that we often should be choosing, you know, eating for our body's needs and the nutrients that we need. Um, but oftentimes this, we ignore that or we overeat then or um, we're eating due to emotional cues. So emotional cues are really different. Um, they're in a response to a feeling. So we often hear that people are eating if they're bored, um, maybe if we're stressed, we eat. Um, and we'll talk about that next. Um, maybe if we're angry or tired, I know for me, I overeat as soon as I don't get enough sleep. Um, maybe if we're lonely, we're looking for food to fill that void. Um, so oftentimes that's when we're turning to food and maybe that's when we're making those poor decisions. And then HALT is something that we often turn to in health promotion is addressing, you know, am I actually hungry or am I angry, lonely, or tired? which is often where we'll see that reaching for those unhealthy foods. So now it's gonna talk about how stress plays a role within ourselves um, and really how that influences the foods that we're choosing and when we're choosing to eat and how much. All right, thanks Braden. Uh, so once again, it's Nat, I'm one of the specialists at CFP board and uh, so Brayden just mentioned emotional uh, eating, and we're going to link uh, stress to uh, to that. So here you can see with regards to how stress happens. You've got event, mental filter, and then that uh, stress reaction. Uh, underneath, I uh, tend to use this equation quite often, S equals P greater than R. Uh, you can define stress this way as well. So stress occurs when the pressure is greater than the resource. And we could uh, mix those letters up a little bit and they can uh, fall in suit uh, with how stress happens. So again, your event would be your pressures, uh, your mental filter would be your resource, and then your stress reaction would be your S, your, uh, your stress. So with regards to event or uh, pressures, uh, what are some examples that would fit under this category? In the chat, write down a few examples of uh, potential pressures that uh, would increase one's stress level. Let's see I a can few. Think of a few right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Let's see if people are awake this morning. Right, absolutely. 
financial burdens, deadlines, peers, peers, money, home life. Very good. So those are all examples of uh, pressures, kids, right? Uh, we're all dealing with the new pressures now, as was mentioned, with uh, the change in uh, routine, the change in uh, trying to work, the, ch the change in trying to homeschool uh, uh, your children. All right. So we can see the list going on and on here. Very good. Uh, key thing with pressures, is, and uh, it's great that the list is still going, is it's exactly that. A pressure can be anything for anybody at some point. So that's it with regards to pressures. Let's look at the middle now, the mental filter or the R, the resources. Uh, let's uh, write down, again, some examples in the chat of some uh, resources. So what uh, do I mean by resources? Let's see some examples in the chat. Exercise, good. Menu planning, right? So preparing. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. PSP, so individuals can be uh, resources, right? Absolutely. Even being on this call right now is a resource. Yeah, we're going to see that listed a little bit uh, later on. Uh, good. Meal prep. So more, more or less as that's going on, uh, right, that physical uh, exercise there with that punching bag can be uh, uh, released for a few different things. Uh, but, but with regards to your mental filter or your resource, these are more or less the things that we all do in order to manage our stress. If we are not utilizing our resources and our pressures are greater, we are then going to start to see some reactions to stress. Uh, so with regards to reactions to stress, uh, write a few of those down in the chat. How do you know when you're stressed? What are some examples of uh, signals that your body will let you know that you are dealing with stress? Flustered, sweating, headache, perfect. I'm glad the list is growing uh, rapidly enough, right? That's exactly it. With regards to uh, our reactions to stress, um, it's important for us to be able to recognize these. Uh, it is our body's way of telling us uh, that, again, our pressures are greater than our resource. And uh, we need to be able to, uh, to listen at that particular point. Uh, you can see on the slide here, uh, acute short-term or chronic long-term, right? So if uh, most of the uh, things that were mentioned are probably short-term reactions, right? Uh, acute reactions. Uh, however, if we don't address them, uh, eventually we can start to see some long-term effect, uh, effects of uh, dealing with uh, too much stress. Last thing I'll cover with regards to this equation here or this uh, kind of slide, um, is this universal? So is this equation the same for everyone? I'll let you contemplate that. Uh, but bottom line is the letters are more or less the same, but the values are different from everybody. So that's how it differs from person to person. With regards to the pressures, something that's stressful for me may not be stressful for you and vice versa. So that's how the, re the uh, pressures change from person to person. On the other hand, the resources. So again, we can all name all kinds of different resources, uh, but they will differ from person to person because one chooses to use more, uh, one regularly uses those resources, and that allows them to deal with those pressures. So that's exactly it with regards to, uh, to resources. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I think another thing to mention with resources is we both we have internal resources as well as external. So I think yeah. we focused on in the chat more of those external resources, um, but we do have internal resources to cope with those stressors. Perfect. And that's exactly it. I was just about to expand on the resources yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> on the same, uh, same. Um, yeah. Wavelength. <laughs> yeah. So with regards to resources, that's exactly it. There are an abundance of resources. Uh, and it can be anything and everything that we do for ourselves. Uh, when pressures increase, what do we tend to do quite often? Put aside those resources. Put aside the things we do for ourselves uh, in order to help somebody else, in order to uh, complete a task, in order to make sure we uh, get that deadline uh, complete on time, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, those situations are going to happen. Uh, but again, if they are constantly happening, we are then going to obviously start to see a lot more of those uh, acute reactions to uh, short-term stress. So something to be uh, aware of. 
Uh, last thing, what do we have control over in this equation? We have control Re over the event? Not really. Right, think about what we're in now, right? That's right, resources. Way to go, Brandon. Uh, but that's exactly it. Pressures uh, and then the stress response, not necessarily, but we do have control over the resources. So, so the more we focus on the resources, the more we can uh, deal with the pressures and influence that, uh, that outcome. So if we are not utilizing our mental filter, if we are not uh, looking at the, the positives in certain things with regards to our attitudes, uh, not utilizing our resources, we are going to have that negative uh, situation with uh, stress levels. But if we are looking at the positives, if we are looking at um, and utilizing our resources, we can hopefully have that, uh, that positive uh, reaction to stress. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one other thing that uh, we're going to get to here that maybe I'll mention now is that uh, we can also revert to negative coping mechanisms. So again, our resources can be quite uh, constructive when we use the right ones. However, we probably all have a negative or a destructive coping mechanism, uh, whether that's procrastination, that's one of mine. So again, when I uh, tend to get uh, high levels of uh, stress, I may procrastinate, may end up uh, cleaning the house versus doing the things I should be doing, right? But that's uh, exactly it. Uh, we may have negative coping mechanisms, procrastination. Uh, I think I saw over there, overeating, over drinking. That's right. So turning to other negative coping mechanisms. Key things to be aware of them. Today, we're going to focus a little bit more on when we turn to that, uh, to food, that emotional uh, eating. Uh, next slide there, Breed. All right. So let's look at uh, some of the effects of stress. So when we are dealing with uh, stress, we release certain hormones, uh, adrenaline helping us kind of get through certain uh, situations and cortisol uh, along with it and a few others. Uh, cortisol is listed here because it is more or less the negative uh, hormone that impacts us. So again, it uh, starts to uh, create all kinds of negative impacts on us. Uh, one of the, a few of the things that are identified are, are listed here. So slows down our metabolism with regards to uh, controlling weight. Does that impact? Absolutely. So if our metabolism is slowing down, we're not burning and utilizing as much energy. Uh, again, chances are we're still consuming that uh, same amount of food. Uh, if not more, I'm going to get to that in a second. And of course, with that, uh, calories going up and potentially weight. Uh, more susceptible to illness. So again, it's going to impact our immune system, uh, start to make it a little bit uh, weaker, and then we deal with uh, being sick more often. With regards to uh, increased cravings, so cortisol also has an impact on our sleep. Uh, Braden mentioned that earlier, that uh, when she's stressed, she tends to, uh, I think you mentioned something about sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, with regards to uh, cortisol and sleep, it impacts our ability to sleep well. And when we're not sleeping well during the day, uh, what do we tend to uh, turn towards? High energy foods, caffeines, things that are going to keep us uh, going, right? Uh, uh, increase the pressure, decrease the sleep, increase the uh, stimulants to keep us going, right? So that's uh, exactly how uh, more or less... Uh, kind of our society is going these days. Uh, when we are craving uh, high energy foods, are they the healthy foods that we should be craving? No, we're talking uh, high sugar, uh, simple uh, uh, simple sugars. When we eat those, uh, energy levels quickly go up, but quickly go down and then we're craving more food or more high uh, uh, sugary foods. So again, we continue on in that cycle. Uh, if that's occurring along with that uh, slowed down metabolism, you could see the uh, the outcome here with uh, with weight gain. Um, I'll jump in that and just add to this. Um, oftentimes when we're not getting enough sleep, we're actually impacting our stress levels as well. So it's like sleep, stress, overeat, and this endless cycle of, you know, getting down this, uh, you know, overeating pattern, not, eat, not sleeping enough, all of these like negative impacts uh, kind of co-linked together um, to, to have an overall negative impact. 
Yeah, that's right. Now let's do the next slide. I'll link it uh, to that. We're starting to get to there anyways. <laughs> so again, we were just getting, we were just getting to this uh, exactly. So how stress can lead to weight gain. So we just discussed a few of the impacts with regards to increased levels of cortisol. So once again, with regards to that cortisol, regardless of uh, what the pressure is, uh, we start the release of cortisol with any pressure, any type of stress. It's part of our uh, fight or flight response, biologically programmed uh, into us. Uh, so again, regardless if it's positive uh, stressor, negative stressor, we're going to release that cortisol. And the longer it's uh, in our system at, at higher levels, uh, the impact it has on us. Uh, here we can see again, uh, if stress is there and we are reverting to uh, food as kind of uh, coping, as kind of that, um, uh, that uh, negative coping, uh, that's exactly it. Uh, you can see how we're going to increase uh, calories in. Uh, if we take the things that we do away from ourselves, such as exercise, we can then see uh, reducing the amount of physical activity uh, we're doing. Uh, I'm not going to go for that workout today. I'm going to, I got all these things to do. Pressure is too high. Uh, skip the workout uh, today. If we're going to do that, we're eventually going to run out of time for that meal prep that you discussed with regards to your resources and uh, convenient uh, eating is going to take place. Uh, fast food, whatever's available in the house, whatever's uh, ready to go. Uh, chances are, if you haven't done that meal prep that we touched on last week, those healthy uh, snacks, those healthy foods are not necessarily going to be uh, ready. So you're going to grab the first thing that uh, that comes uh, in front of you or uh, that you're driving by and you see that, that two-for-one uh, Taco Bell sign and stop by and grab that. So that's exactly it here with regards to how stress can lead to weight gain. Um, let's do the next slide. <clears throat> so you can see here different ways of uh, lessening the effects of stress. So this is uh, nothing uh, new. These are all different ideas on how to reduce the impact of the pressures in your life, increasing the resources. How I very much like to uh, discuss this is awareness. If we are aware of where we're at with regards to um, our stress levels, where the pressure is coming from, and what we're doing to combat that uh, those pressures, uh, we can take control of that. So again, if we're not aware and we think this is routine, this is regular, uh, again, chances are we're going to continue on in that path. But if we can be self-aware of our reactions to stress. Uh, why am I having a headache more often? Uh, why am I not sleeping uh, well? Where's my energy level? If we can cue into those uh, a little bit more uh, effectively, uh, utilize and focus on our resources because that's what, what we can control. We can lessen the effects of, uh, of stress. Uh, but bottom line, with regards to your resources, find the things that work for you. Again, if we were all to do all of uh, what's listed here, might not necessarily work for you, might work for half, but again, uh, we're all individuals. The equation's the same, but uh, the values change everywhere. So you do have to find those resources that, uh, that work for you. Uh, so again, biggest key for, uh, for me to uh, influence uh, hopefully somebody today is to try to be more self-aware of where you're at with regards to uh, those different levels of uh, of your resources, of your pressures, and your uh, your stress cues. Now, let's see the next slide. Just to add to this, I think it's really important that we're acknowledging that overeating and maybe turning to that overeating state if we're stressed uh, might not be the best thing for us or for our bodies. So looking for other ways to combat that stress is what we're looking at here. You know, being active, you know, doing positive things for ourselves as opposed to maybe those reaching for negative um, coping mechanisms. So whatever works Perfect. for you, that's why Nat said, uh, these aren't all gonna work for you, but choosing something or trialing something as opposed to always turning to food uh, might be the way around uh, coping with stress positively. Yeah. I think uh, that was exactly it with this uh, particular slide leading to, to, to that. Uh, so we got a few more uh, tips, right? So uh, manage those st stressful situations. If we're aware of what situations make us uh, a little bit more uh, stressed, we can manage those uh, well, whether it's planning ahead, 
uh, planning for activities around those situations so that uh, you decrease uh, that level of stress. Uh, and then, as Braden was just mentioning, find those healthy ways. So if we recognize when we are procrastinating, if we recognize when we are turning to food, we're turning to uh, cigarettes, turning to alcohol, uh, if we can recognize that that's how we are coping, we can then uh, choose a different uh, method more often than, uh, than what we are uh, uh, falling back on our negative coping mechanism. Uh, here again, you see a few different examples. Bottom line is you have to find something that works uh, for you. Uh, good, last one, last uh, slide here on this uh, particular subject. Okay. And this ties into a few of uh, the reasons. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, a few of the resources that uh, that you queued into uh, before. Uh, so another tip is to have those healthy foods, those healthy uh, snacks uh, available. If you haven't prepped for it, if you haven't planned for it, uh, again, you're going to turn to those uh, unhealthy uh, foods because that's what's available. That's what you're you're craving. Uh, so again. Uh, you see a list here, find something healthy that you enjoy and chances are uh, more than likely you're going to turn to those when they're available and ready to go uh, than your unhealthier uh, choices. So again, planning and prepping like we touched on last week is of uh, utmost importance when uh, we tend to emotionally eat. Uh, because again, when we're looking for those comfort foods, if it's uh, the healthier options there that you enjoy, grab that and that'll start to become a little bit more routine for you. So again, planning and prepping, very important for any of this. If we don't, uh, again, easy to fall into those uh, uh, cravings and uh, revert to perhaps a negative coping that you're trying to change. Out of pure, right. um, out of pure curiosity and maybe selfishness, can everyone put in the chat what some healthy comfort foods are that they might turn to? Um, just to get ideas, I'm more curious than anything of, you know, if you're turning to a healthy food for coping, uh, what food are you turning to? Apples? Apples with cinnamon on top is one of my favorites. Tea is an also, also. All kinds of ideas there. Yeah. Ooh, frozen grapes. That's a good one. I've never done that. I should. Frozen blueberries. Greek yogurt. I hope if nothing else, this helps promote other people's ideas. Maybe. <laughs> Braden, I'm on the same wavelength as you. All right. <laughs> Some creative ideas. So good. So we have thought of it. If yeah. not. That's Good. awesome. All right, so we're going to turn now more so to addressing those triggers. So what are triggers? Um, so oftentimes in our society, uh, we'll encounter stimuli um, that, that we have learned to associate with certain foods or certain items. So, you know, if you, uh, for example, if, you know, every Tuesday we've associated in um, our society as Taco Tuesday, so we're often reaching to tacos on Tuesday or uh, fish and chip Fridays. So uh, maybe every Friday we're turning to, you know, that deep fried, more unhealthy choice, uh, which is fish and chips. Um, or another example could be, you know, my family goes to the beach all the time. Um, every time we're at the beach, we go to our favorite ice cream shop. Um, that's, you know, not the healthiest option. So kind of those triggers that are associating what's going on around us and what maybe our norms are um, and encountering those and actually associating a certain event or situation with a certain food. Um, so triggers can be one of two things. So triggers can be emotional. So our emotional attachment to the food that we're eating or the situation. Maybe I grew up going to this favorite ice cream shop every time we go to the cottage which is actually one of my triggers, uh, can't lie. Um, and then situational, so situ certain places or actions. Uh, maybe every time after, you know, I do an activity, a certain activity, 
um, I go out for wings afterwards with friends, maybe after my ball hockey game. Um, so certain activities or situations that trigger you. So within this kind of section of our discussion, we'll be addressing what triggers are, um, as well as mindful eating or mindless eating, I guess. Um, and what mindless eating is, because oftentimes in our society, that's what happens with us. We're constantly on the go and we're constantly turning to uh, foods that might not be the healthiest without even realizing we're eating them or overeating them. Um, so we'll talk about mindless eating as well and um, how we can kind of address that and kind of change our habits to be more mindful as we eat. Um, so maybe in the chat right now, write down, and I see some people already, <laughs> Uh, beer and wings, watching hockey, write down some um, triggers you have personally, if you feel comfortable putting it in the chat. Um, oftentimes, you don't even realize how many triggers there are around you. Um, we're bombarded with triggers constantly. So um, feel free to write in the chat some of your triggers um, that you see in your day-to-day -day life. So a common one would be sitting down in front of the TV after a long day. What are we constantly turning to? Maybe um, those potato chips or those extra salty snacks um, or that ice cream, right? So we're associating uh, that event with actually eating a food. So that's triggering us or promoting us to eat that food. Yeah, so the Domino car, and there's a ton of them around um, that passes you all the time. Or there's a, a certain bus near my neighbor in my neighborhood that has a big uh, sushi logo on it. Um, it's promoting you to go to this one sushi, sushi restaurant, and it's it kills me every time. I'm like, oh, as soon as I see that, I want sushi, right? Um, and it's almost telling me to like, feed me, I need this food right now. Um, this can often be so we're seeing or smelling the food, we're seeing signs or advertising to the food. Um, all these things can, can promote uh, overeating. So yeah, wings and beer often always tied to, you know, uh, football, hockey, basketball, whatever sport you're watching. Uh, Super Bowl, huge, you know, every year you go and it's a big deal, right? Um, and get all the unhealthy foods and things like that. Um, in addition to kind of those, um, you know, triggers in terms of seeing or smelling or seeing those advertisements or the association, um, there's often boredom as well. So when we're bored or when we have downtime or when we maybe want to procrastinate uh, doing an activity we don't want to do, we might engage in that unhealthy eating habit. So boredom is another one um, that we might turn to food as well. Um, emotions, we already talked about quite a bit already, so I won't dig into it too much. Um, but when we're stressed and when we're um, feeling stressed, we might often turn to those unhealthy eating habits. And then one of those biggest factors is just mindless eating. So, you know, without even realizing it, while we're watching TV, we may have eaten the whole bag of chips. Um, or as we're, you know, um, driving, we see that Domino's car and we're, we suddenly want Domino's. So being mindless of that and how we're actually um, cognitively being kind of marketed to all the time, uh, really important to be aware of. So one thing that I wanna talk about is mindless eating. Um, as I mentioned in our society, huge in terms of what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. We're constantly on the go, um, whether that be with work, kids, uh, prior commitments, sports, you name it, we are constantly on the go. Um, even this morning when I was eating my breakfast I caught, and I was reviewing this page, I caught myself eating my breakfast while reviewing work. And I was like, oh no, I should not be doing this. I need to be more mindful of what I'm eating as I'm about to teach mindful eating. Um, but you know, you don't even realize how much it is in our day-to-day -day society. Um, so in terms of mindless eating, a few different tips and tricks I would say we'll talk about now. Um, so portion size. So I mentioned one was uh, at the TV, you're watching TV, you have your bag of chips and suddenly you've eaten the whole bag of chips, right? Um, so portion size plays a huge role in our overall health and well-being. So we're not only turning to those unhealthy snacks, but we're eating a lot of them. And that's a double whammy in terms of our overall health and well-being is, um, you know, your, your 
it's okay to have that snack once in a while, that other food once in a while, but when we're eating it in a large quantity, it's gonna have negative impacts on our overall health and, and weight and goals and all that. Um, so in terms of portion size, we wanna make sure that we're using a smaller plate. So one thing I've done in my home is actually my, we have small plates and large plates, which used to be about that big, um, cause they looked nice, but I now have bought in smaller plates. So if we're having a big meal, we're now choosing that medium sized plate, I guess you would call it, instead of that huge plate um, to promote a smaller portion size of what we're eating. Same with that when we're returning to snacks as well. Um, if we're turning to that bag of chips, okay to have once in a while, but maybe instead of bringing the whole bag of chips over, we're dumping our, our portion amount that we want uh, into a bowl or, or something to make us uh, only eat that amount or to promote eating a certain amount as opposed to that large quantity. Um, I know uh, based on experience, I feel like everyone's trying to take out right now as something new and fun and a way to get out of the house. Um, but being mindful that in restaurants, the portion sizes are huge. Um, so being mindful of that, you know, when you're eating takeout or uh, bringing things home, um, be mindful that you maybe take half of what the item is or maybe less than that. Um, eat that on your plate first. And then if you're still hungry, you can go for more, of course. But being mindful of that, um, that idea that restaurants serve a big portion size and save the rest for another day. And my partner is always mad when I have leftovers of takeout and he doesn't. Um, so that's just another fun uh, thing for me. <laughs> as well, um, portion snacks on that plate. So, <laughs> sorry Chase. Um, put things in a bowl, put things on a plate um, to make it feel like it's a large portion, but still um, you're getting enough of that item. Another tips for portion size is um, you know, being aware of what you're eating and being uh, um, like, am I hungry right now? Looking at that halt, so hungry, uh, lonely, tired, all those things. Um, as well, making sure that we're eating adequate meals and nutrients. So turning to that well-balanced meal um, to get all those fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, and lean proteins in. And then, you know, if we want a snack later, turning to maybe that healthier item or changing the portion size. Um, to be able to eat that item and not have the negative repercussions. Um, and then again here, I think balance is really important. So that 80-20 rule of, you know, you don't always have to eat uh, unhealthy, you wanna eat healthy, um, but having that balance in your life, you're not depriving yourself of anything so that you're more likely to eat those healthy foods more often. And then here is accessibility. So um, I don't know if you do the grocery shopping in your home or not, um, but keeping nutrition snacks on hand is really, really important um, for mindless eating. So if we're mindlessly eating and we have accessible, we're accessible to a bag of chips or um, you know candy or, or unhealthy foods, uh, we're way more likely to eat it. Um, so being mindful of that and and making sure when you're at the grocery store choosing those appropriate foods that you know they're going to come back and be in your pantry um, so being aware of that um, as well having less healthy options in sight out of sight so maybe someone in your house buys the bag of chips uh, maybe pushing that to the back of the cupboard so it's not the first thing you view when you open the cupboard door or i actually do this for my partner is I'll um, rearrange the fridge and put the items that I want him to eat uh, closer to the front. So that's the first thing he sees when he opens the door of the grocery, uh, of the fridge and is way more likely to choose those items. As well with accessibility is um, being able to pre-make those uh, snacks, those healthy snacks. So I'm not gonna turn to a watermelon wedge as my snack if I haven't cut up the watermelon that's gonna take a lot more time than reaching for that bag of chips. So being mindful of that and planning um, to, for those healthy snacks, really important. And I see my fitness pal is also, also a resource yeah, in the chat. Also don't eat too fast, absolutely. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute with distractions. But yeah, eating fast is a big one, not being able to understand what's uh, your body's hunger cues. 
All right, and last one is distractions. So for me, I was literally working this morning while eating breakfast, bad thing on my part, um, but being mindful of those distractions that you have and actually taking the time out of your day to um, you know, actually eat and be mindful of what you're eating. So, you know, sit at the table and actually eat a meal with your family as opposed to sitting in front of the TV. Uh, huge right now for us uh, with technology readily available. Yeah. Oh, there we go. A little <laughs> lag in the, uh, the change. Yeah. So a few things with regards to with regards to staying in charge. Uh, so again, uh, we just went through a few different uh, tips, uh, but the more you are staying in charge, the uh, the better. Uh, so Brian touched on uh, tuning into your hunger signals. So if we can become more familiar uh, with our own, slow it down, uh, really think about uh, uh, am I hungry? Am I bored? Why am I uh, wanting to eat right now? So if we could, we uh, learn more about our cues, uh, we can take more control and take charge of that situation. Uh, triggers, so again, we touched on triggers today too. Uh, if we're aware of our triggers, uh, we can take charge of that as well, right? That's exactly it, uh, know your triggers. Uh, if you uh, know it is uh, advertising, if you know it is uh, smelling foods, uh, you'll see it later on here. Don't tempt uh, fate, right, uh, or yourself. So don't put yourselves in those situations. So again, uh, be uh, aware of your surroundings and and everything along those lines. Uh, look elsewhere for comfort. So we touched on that today too, right? Uh, find some positive coping mechanisms that will help you reduce uh, your stress, that help you uh, keep comforted. Have those healthy snacks that readily made and available so that you turn to that versus uh, some of the others that are available. Eat a balanced diet. So again, if we are uh, focused on eating a little bit more regularly, we don't get into those situations where we're craving uh, high sugary foods. Uh, our energy levels are steady enough so that we can replace it with uh, a healthier uh, option versus when we are low in energy, craving high sugary foods and uh, grabbing anything and everything uh, we can find uh, in sight. <clears throat> Exercise regularly, get enough sleep, um, be aware of what you eat. So again, some of those key things with regards to regularly maintaining your resources in order to be able to uh, control your level of stress. You can kind of look at it as preventative. Uh, don't wait until the pressure is uh, are, are high in order to start some of these things. If you're constantly focused on them, again, those uh, pressures are all gonna be manageable. It's not gonna be that small little pressure uh, that you tend to uh, overreact with because you're constantly focusing on your resources and able to deal with those uh, uh, pressures. Let's see the next slide. I've been waiting to talk about this for the last few minutes. So intuitive eating. So this is fairly uh, interesting. I find this fairly interesting. So intuitive eating is something that I would almost say our society, our North American lifestyle is not too in check with. So what intuitive eating really means is uh, it's our ability to identify when we are actually hungry, eating what we need, and stopping when we are full. And uh, you just mentioned all kinds of different uh, ideas around how to do that. Smaller plates, uh, slowing down. I saw it in the chat there, uh, the time that we take to eat. Uh, again, uh, some research has identified that uh, it takes us about 20 minutes for our uh, body to recognize it's been fed, for our mind to recognize it's been fed. Um, I joke around with uh, individuals, but uh, I've always uh, teaching in board and we're a training base, so we run into courses quite often. And I remember uh, going in after a course party that took place at the uh, Mandarin. I was doing a healthy eating uh, uh, chat there with, with this group. And uh, exactly that, I kind of joke around since then. Uh, imagine the amount of damage you can do in 20 minutes uh, at the Mandarin. So just uh, think about that with regards to your intuitive eating. And when we get to the next slide, not quite yet there, Braden, but uh, 
I'll cue into that at that point there. Uh, but again, intuitive eating, that's exactly it. Uh, recognize when we're actually hungry and stopping when we're full. If you think about the way we tend to eat here in, uh, in Canada, in North America, uh, it's not necessarily ingrained in us to do this. We're looking for that uh, best uh, bang for our, uh, for our buck. Super size, it's only 30 cents. Sure, let's do it, right? And then we tend to eat uh, that super size meal, no problem, and think uh, we're ahead of the game because uh, we uh, we made better on our on our dollar that we spent, right? Uh, we grew up, at least I did. Finish what's on your plate. Is that in check with intuitive eating? All right, not at all. We tend to overeat when that's the case. If again, Brady mentioned size of a plate. If uh, we fill that plate a little too full, uh, why can't we say no, save it for later, or slow it down and wait that uh, uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes to see if we're actually still hungry. If we're still hungry at that point, then you uh, uh, you have that second serving or finish off that uh, the remainder on your plate. So some different things to think about with regards to uh, intuitive uh, eating. You can see here a few different uh, attitudes that impact this. Uh, again, uh, body acceptance and uh, recognizing that uh, dieting isn't necessarily uh, uh, helpful. It can actually be harmful. So I think we've touched on that quite a bit throughout the six weeks. Uh, but again, if it is a large change that we cannot maintain for a long period of time, chances are it is more harmful than it is helpful. And then with regards to body acceptance, uh, again, if we can uh, recognize and be happy with uh, uh, certain things, uh, we're going to reduce the stress and the emotional uh, impacts that it has wanting something that uh, perhaps isn't attainable. Uh, on the other side, the behaviors. So learn that not to eat for emotional, environmental, and social reasons. We kind of touched on that. Really cue in uh, to your physiological reasons to, uh, to be hungry. And that's what we're looking at when we need to uh, replenish our calories in. The second part here, learn how to interpret body signals. And that's what we've uh, touched on uh, as well. So intuitive eating isn't easy, but it's something that we can all focus on with a few uh, uh, key tips and tricks. And you mentioned a few of them, size of the plate, slowing down the amount uh, uh, of time it takes us to eat. Uh, again, it can help us recognize uh, when we are actually uh, full and not simply eating because it's there in front of us. Uh, finishing everything on our plate just because, uh, again, it's there. Flip it to the next uh, slide for me there, Braden. Thank you. Uh, here you look at uh, something to think about and to consider, that hunger scale. So, again, if we're not in check with our intuitive eating and we're eating uh, that great big uh, plate, that great big turkey uh, dinner, if you want to think about it uh, that way, and we make it past – I think it's a little uh, oh, shifted awesome. there, our scale, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. So if, we stop, if we're able to recognize and stop when we're satisfied, again, we're going to be ahead of the game in the long run. If we can't recognize that and we're not uh, in check we're, with our intuitive eating, uh, we quite often will make our way further past that scale, closer to uh, uh, eating until sick. So I'm sure we've all had uh, those large meals where uh, it was certainly good at the time, but uh, afterwards uh, we are not so happy with our uh, uh, with the outcome of uh, getting all of that um, in. Uh, again, think about the Mandarin. Think about that large uh, turkey dinner. Uh, think about uh, uh, that all-you-can-eat wings event uh, that I've gone to in the past, right? Uh, different things to think about with regards to this. But if we are more in check with our intuitive eating, we can stop uh, closer to the middle when we're satisfied versus uh, uh, moving on. Uh, very good, let's move on to road to success. All right, so the last kind of portion, we'll jump through this quite quickly. Um, so road to success, so how do we kind of move forward with this um, and start that um, intuitive eating process uh, maybe be more mindful of what we're eating. So we'll look at a couple of things. We'll look at eating out, and as well, we'll look at um, those people around us that might make us, you know, either stay on track or derail and choose those higher 
fat or higher, you know, a more unhealthy foods. Um, so some top tips when we're eating out. Um, so manage your portion size. So keep the portion small. So cut that in half. Uh, Nat mentioned supersizing. Maybe don't do that, even though it's, you know, 30 cents more. That's how they get you. Um, and be mindful of what you're eating in terms of portion size. Uh, when we look at dessert, oftentimes those are those unhealthy items, um, especially at restaurants. Um, you know, that seven mile high cake or whatever it is. Um, if you're still hungry after your meal, turning to those more healthy items. So maybe that fruit, um, maybe a cappuccino, a decaf cappuccino if it's late, a, a sprinkled cinnamon on top, um, or if you want those desserts in moderation, you know, so turning to those other foods is okay, but not all the time. Um, oftentimes if I want a dessert, I'll share it with someone who I'm out with, or if you bring it home, you know, you're sharing those items, so you're not eating as much, uh, or taking a really small amount of, you know, that unhealthy dessert and pairing it with fresh fruit or something a little more healthy. Um, and then avoid those upsizing uh, during takeout. So the supersize, but just add the calories and the fat and the, the saturated fat. Um, and then making healthy choices when we're eating out. Um, oftentimes you'll notice when you're eating out, there's not a lot of veggies on the plate. Um, I can think of multiple restaurants where you get no vegetables. Um, so always making sure to be aware of that. So maybe ask for a side of veggies, maybe start with a starter salad, um, things like that, that incorporate those, um, that balanced plate approach from Canada's food guide. As well, when we're looking to eat out, um, turning to whole grains as opposed to those refined sugars or those, um, you know, those white breads or white pastas, um, turning to maybe quinoa or brown rice or uh, barley, things that are available, um, to you that are the more healthier option uh, in terms of Candace Food Guide as well. And then a big one with um, eating out is that sodium intake. Um, so being mindful that, you know, oftentimes there's sodium added to the foods to make them taste better. Um, and being mindful of that some of the items that you're choosing might be more filled with sodium than others. So when we're looking at sauces or condiments or, or things like that, uh, that soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, um, whatever it might be, soups, um, really high in sodium, so be aware of that. Um, try and get things on the side, so sauces that are filled with unhealthy things, try and get those on the side, as well as skip those um, the sweeter drinks or those sweeter alcoholic drinks, um, and turn to water as your drink of choice, maybe with a lime or lemon wedge, um, and limit that alcohol to uh, what's representative uh, in terms of low risk drinking guidelines. So being mindful of those. And then big one for eating out, for me at least, is asking how things are prepared. Really important. Um, we know that if things are steamed or um, baked or broiled or grilled, things are going to be healthier than if they're deep fried or breaded or you know cooked uh, in, a, in a way that's adding fat to it and calories really quickly. And then another thing is look ahead. Um, oftentimes I look at the menu before I go to a restaurant and kind of suss out what might be the healthier options for me um, as opposed to when I'm there maybe you know being impacted by the social environment that I'm in and choosing that unhealthy meal I'm more uh, apt to choose that healthy meal um, and then when we're talking about roadblocks or saboteurs being mindful that there are people in our lives that may encourage us to choose that unhealthy um, item and they might not be doing it on purpose, but being mindful of that and uh, being able to address that conversation. So maybe have the conversation with a friend to say, you know, I'm trying to eat healthier. Um, I'd love if instead of we went to McDonald's for dinner, we could go to a some healthy option. Insert healthy restaurant here. Um, it's hard to even think of one. Um, but um, being mindful of that and getting that support is really important. Sorry, I'm going to go over by like one minute. Um, and then in terms of uh, tips for success. So pay attention to your eating cues. Um, keep your stress in check and be able to identify those stress signals as they come. Um, know what your triggers are. So for me, I know that it's that bus that passes me every time. 
uh, with the sushi advertisement on it, uh, being mindful of those triggers in your life um, and being able to address them. Have that support system that's readily available that's gonna promote eating healthy as opposed to the negative effects of, of not eating healthy, um, as well as being able to be have a balanced diet. So that 80-20 rule, don't deprive yourself of all the unhealthy foods. Uh, we, we can eat some, but um, be mindful that you're more often or not turning to those healthy foods. And lastly, know that lapses, relapses, and collapses might happen. Um, that's okay. Plan ahead. And if they do happen, if you do, you know, overeat at a restaurant once, it's not the be all end all. Um, acknowledge it, maybe see where you went wrong and move forward with it. Um, so resources, uh, some resources here, Canvas Food Guide and un unlockfood.ca, amazing resources uh, for any, any questions you have moving forward with nutrition. Uh, this is our last session, so I hope Hope you took away of the information from the last five plus this session. Um, but if there are any questions now, you can ask them in the chat. Um, I do have two questions I need to ask. And Nat, did you have something? We did get a question. Sure. We got one in the chat there. Uh, intermittent fasting <clears throat> healthy? Uh, is intermittent fasting healthy? And what is the proper technique to implement it? Did you want to talk on it? You want me to? Uh, you can. I, I know there's a resource. We should have. Uh, I wish we had it. Maybe I'll try and find it. I know. I was thinking. The exact same yeah. thing. So we do have a, a pretty good resource. Basically, intermittent fasting. There's several different ways to go about doing it. Uh, but more or less, you eat for a certain period of time, and then you don't eat for a certain period of time. Uh, and they vary in, in, in methods. I push it along this line. So most of our courses are geared towards performance. Okay, and if you think about uh, fasting and performance, uh, what type of benefit are you gonna get from uh, fasting and then going to, uh, to, to do a workout? How are you going to be able to uh, perform at, at your best? Uh, so to me, I always ask people, uh, why are you looking to, uh, to, to, to fast and for, for, for what goal? Typically, it's for, uh, for weight loss. And then I ask them the same questions that we touched on earlier. Uh, all right, how long do you think you can maintain this? Is it something that, uh, uh, that you can maintain for a long period of time? So with regards to intermittent fasting, again, I kind of uh, touch it along those lines. Uh, if it's something that we can't uh, maintain for a long period of time, uh, if it's uh, something that's too drastic of a change, uh, chances are it's not going to be successful for you. Uh, even if you think about uh, the last little uh, bit uh, that we touched on, uh, so you haven't eaten for about eight hours, uh, what are you going to finally allow yourself uh, to eat when, uh, when it's there? Uh, chances are it's not going to be the, uh, the, the great food that you have uh, lined up. It's going to be more or less the... Uh, the unhealthy foods that, uh, that are readily available. Uh, so perhaps, uh, okay. Sorry. You, are Jackie you looking for it, Debra? Uh, Jackie put the handout in the group. So the group message, uh, the handout I was referring to on intermittent fasting is there for anyone available who wants it. Okay, perfect. It, it, it's in the handouts. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, good. So it goes into a little bit more on the different methods of intermittent fasting and the, the pros and cons. Uh, but again, I kind of uh, gear it towards performance. Again, I think uh, uh, with our clientele, we should be eating a little bit more for performance than, uh, than some of the other reasons why uh, people will go uh, towards intermittent fasting. Uh, so hopefully that answered your question. And, and if not, uh, maybe you can get a little bit more insight on uh, the handout that Jackie put on there. Thank you, Jackie. If there aren't any other questions, we'll That's it for me there, uh, Brie. All right. Um, so thank you very much. I'm sorry we went over a few minutes. Um, but thank you very much for attending our last Mission Nutrition session. Uh, next week, we're actually starting in the same, similar time slot, um, something on stress. So Nat and Jackie will be on with uh, a three-week stress management 
of tips and tricks to manage our stress during this time. Um, so please feel free to go on that, uh, register through connection. But other than that, thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a great week and great day. Thank you, bye everyone. Bye.